Welcome to the I Work For Him podcast. I'm Michael Mariko, producer of the I Work For Him radio program, the voice of the faith and work movement. Our mission is to transform the workplace of every Christian into a mission field. What does that look like in your workplace? Let's find out right now. Hey, you've tuned into I Work For Him, the mouthpiece for the faith and work movement right here in the United States of America. And I got to, you'll understand that clarification a little bit later. We're your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Thanks for with it, being with us today, listeners. And you know, I am just very excited about sharing with you all that is going on with I Work For Him. And I want to remind you that we do have the three books that we just launched this year. And you can find those on our website um, bookstore at iworkforhim.com forward slash bookstore. There you'll find I Work For Him, She Works For Him, and I Retire For Him. And you can buy a bundle and save. But what a great way to um, really learn about all that God is doing in the uh, in the conversation of faith and work for women and retirees. So that's iworkforhim.com forward slash bookstore. When she says bundle, she doesn't mean a bundle. She means just three. That's a bundle. (laughs) You know, the rhetoric is strong and sometimes overwhelming. So many believers feel called to full-time ministry, so they think they should quit their jobs and go to work in a church or a Christian nonprofit. That's a disaster. It's a disaster for the Great Commission, and it's a disaster for the believer. Each one of us has a calling and a unique set of gifts, talents, and abilities. These gifts were meant to be used to give us an ability to earn money and provide for us, but to also give us access to the unbeliever that's out there in the workplace. The unbeliever that will never set foot in a church, but will go to work each and every day. Now, that's a ministry with mission potential. Today, we head down under to talk with Anne-Marie Cross. That's why I said, we're the mouthpiece of the faith and work movement here in the United States of America. But I believe Anne-Marie Cross may be the mouthpiece of the faith and work movement in Australia. She's taken her love for communication and her expertise in podcasting and uses her platform to encourage, equip, and challenge those with ears to hear. Anne-Marie Cross, welcome to I Work For Him. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here calling in from your future. (laughs) <laughs> That's, and I don't know that people understand that, but you know, it's pretty crazy when you think about it, but we are interviewing you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> I just think it's fantastic. And she says it's a good day. And so. she says it's a good day. It's a good day yeah. coming. <laughs> Anne-Marie, tell us a little bit about your faith journey and how you came to the understanding that your workplace was a mission field. You know, that's an interesting question. My faith journey, I was born or adopted, actually, into uh, a Christian home. So I never really knew anything else but uh, the love of the Lord. And it's interesting you talk about uh, mission out in the mission field because my brothers, I had three older brothers, um, two of them were in the mission field, um, are also pastors. And so they were very much in the ministry. But I never really thought that any of the work that I was doing was not able to impact for the Lord. So it was something that I was kind of brought up in and never even thought otherwise. But it was interesting that for for me in the workplace and, of course, now working in my own business, I always knew that how I approached work, how I showed up, every interaction, every action that I have, um, has the po- possibility to to impact for the Lord in my integrity, even if I didn't mention his name. So, you know, that's how I've always been. That's how I was brought up. And uh, what I continue to, to share with, uh, with others today, because some of my, my clients and uh, even the guests that I have on the podcast, they have said that even though we may not mention the name of Jesus, we know how we interact our approach to certain things would certainly um, speak, you know, beautifully um, the message of, of Christ in how we show up, the love, compassion, and all of that. Integrity, excellence is so important. We often say, and I work for him, Anne-Marie, that as a Jesus follower, everybody around us should be benefiting from our faith, whether they believe in Jesus or not. That's yeah. the Christian faith. You know, and, yes. and having that dream that someday we would not ever have to explain that there's that connection, right? That it's just the natural um, thing that comes out of our the fruit of the Spirit inside of us. So talk about your work. What is it that you actually do on a day-to-day basis? So my background is in personal branding. I started off my first business in the career industry, and that really is helping people recognize what's unique about them, what's uncopyable and distinguishable, and then bringing that out in a way that connects, engages, influences their ideal client. 
And more recently, uh, using the knowledge and expertise that I have gained over the last 13 years in podcasting, as a coach who was using that platform to be able to get that message out in a much bigger way, now being able to incorporate my teachings, my training and support and helping other coaches, consultants, service-based businesses, really setting up that podcast to be able to build reach, their reputation as a trusted authority and ultimately begin to nurture listeners into leads, clients, and so that's really the, the primary focus of my business now. What's beautiful is you get to do that and live out your faith while you're doing that and, and share, just be Jesus to all of those clients, which is just fantastic. I love that. Anne-Marie, your business, podcastingwithpurpose.com. I want to make sure I told people where to, how they can find you. So how does your work as a podcast trainer, podcast communicator get impacted by your decision to follow Jesus? Yes. Great question. You know, I have three different podcasts that I host and produce as part of our podcast network. And one of those is the Christian Entrepreneurs Show or the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. And that's where we really talk about faith. Now, even if I am not... uh, if I'm having a a conversation with women in leadership or my other uh, podcast, which is Ambitious Entrepreneur Show, there are still aspects of what I share about my faith, about, you know, know, we talk about business um, strategy and, you know, there are some things that we, and I will say, look, all of the things that I'm sharing are the practical steps that I take. But if I'm not honest with you, totally honest, I love the Lord. And so a lot of my strategy comes from prayer and the insights that I'm that I'm shared, you know, through the Holy Spirit. So there's still aspects of conversations that I can weave into the conversation. And, you know, I could not be uh, honest with my listeners if they didn't realize that. And for some people, they may want to know more. And what tell me a little bit more about that. But um, yeah, so that's kind of how I weave that into to the conversation, even though it may not necessarily be the full conversation, if that makes sense. Sure, it does. You know, and that's one of the things that's so great is that, you know, when Jesus is a part of our life, it is just a natural, when we understand the biblical principles and we're applying them in our own life, then it is an outpouring of that, no matter what words are used to describe that. Um, so I'm, I'm glad for people to hear that because a lot of times people don't understand how can I share Jesus and do my work. Well, it's it's with all that we do in our actions and in our words and just in like you were you kept saying the word integrity and I think that's such a big part of the conversation. Oh, it so is. And you know, sometimes uh, we can turn people off it, by the language that we use and by just, you know, the things what we might call Christian speak, if you will. And whereas we're business owners, we know that to um, speak to our ideal client, there's certain terminologies and phrases that we use to be able to build that rapport, build engagement. And that's similar to, and I think action, that's saying actions speak louder than words. So remember, we're ambassadors of Christ. And so if we start to openly share, which we should, we need to be mindful that our actions are aligned with that. Because I tell you what, if they're not, that's the very first thing that people are going to point out to us. So, mm. you know, be mindful that our actions um continue to, to speak Christ, uh, even though maybe our words don't. And if our words do, we need to align those beautifully for him each and every day. <laughs> or we just need to apologize and go, that's not the Jesus living in me. That's the gym <laughs> coming out. Hey, we're talking, yeah. we're talking today with Anne-Marie Cross. She's got a podcast that you can get a hold of, the Christian Entrepreneur Podcast, and you can listen to it on the Awaken Podcast Network at awakenpodcastnetwork.com. She has a ministry, as we would call a business tree, called podcastingwithpurpose.com. You might want to check her out. We're going to catch up more of her story and talk more about Christianity in Australia right after this break. You listen to I Work For Him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We'll be right back. You know the kind of person that always tells you about the latest trends or the special deals around town? Well, lean in, because here's a message from that kind of person. The Awaken Podcast Network is the place to be. Go to awakenpodcastnetwork.com and unlock God's purpose for your work with help from some friends. You will find a gathering place of podcasts that provide simple tools, faith stories, and conversations that will inspire and equip you to vibrantly live out your faith in your work today. Go ahead, check out awakenpodcastnetwork.com and then be that kind of person and tell a friend. Hey, welcome back to I Work For Him as we talk today with Anne-Marie Cross, podcastingwithpurpose.com is her website. She hails out of Australia, and she's got a, a business tree down there. I want to just ask you, Anne-Marie, because, you know, 
all we hear about Australia is in the news. So we don't really hear much truth of what's going on down there. Tell us about the condition of Christianity in Australia. Great question, Jim. And, you know, had you asked that of me a couple of months ago, I probably would give you a very different answer. But unfortunately, today we are seeing our, especially our state government, slowly uh, put restrictions on what we would call, you know, the, the way that we share our faith, the way that even one of the, um, the changes coming through, they want to stop Christian schools from hiring Christian teachers because, you know, they think that that's discriminatory. And yet the very government that is changing those rules knows the value of hiring people that have similar values and, you know, corporate values to you. So how can they prevent Christian schools from stopping a Christian teacher that has the same core values and understands the teaching within that environment? And, you know, I don't know if you've heard of, of what's going on in the news at the moment here in Australia, the freedom of speech, which I know is just so important in your country. We cannot even speak out uh, against certain protocols or ask questions about certain protocols that the government has put into place. Fast forward that, I, you know, for those of us who are remaining silent and not speaking up and saying, hang on a minute, is this right? What happens if they suddenly say to us, well, now you cannot talk about your faith? because it doesn't align with our values. So, you know, the, the changes that are coming about, it, it really, it, it concerns me. And uh, I hope that more Christians will say, you know, this is not right. And maybe start to think about what kind of mission work can you do by becoming part of some of these local governments and bringing influence for the kingdom of God, which we know is so important. And what, you know, he commands us to do Um yeah, moving forward. So, uh, yeah, there's some concerns there, there, Jim. But as we know, Jim and Martha, the Lord is always in control. Um, so, yes, that's I what I'm told. That. And, he, and he does have all kinds of opportunities for our workplace. Like you just mentioned government. You know, that's something we talk about often is the fact that, um, you know, if someone is has an ability to be in one of those positions, my goodness, we need to rally around them and not discourage them because we need that good influence there. So let's talk about new believers in your country. If people are learning about Jesus, where is that happening? Is it in the church? Is it in the marketplace? Uh, tell us about that. Yes. Well, here in the state of Victoria, we have uh, gone from a title of the world's most livable city to the world's most locked down city. So our churches are not open uh, and haven't been for quite some months and not really sure when they will reopen. So the church in the four walls, I guess, is really, and I, I know across the world, has been shaken. The beautiful thing about that is that so many more people uh, and, and pastors and ministries are sharing their message online, which means that new believers can access incredible content to find out more about Jesus on, online. So, you know, I uh, encourage any new believers to, yes, get inside a community of, of uh, other believers to be able to nurture and to, to grow. But look at a lot of the online resources. That's what we're really doing when we, we're, we're uh, worshipping together via Zoom and live streams and, and things things like that. And that really has um, increased because of the ongoing lockdowns here, especially in our state. You know, we like to joke, quote unquote, here in the United States of America, that God extricated the church from the building and he used COVID to do it because we were so held up in our buildings, we weren't impacting the culture like we needed to. And, and, right. he's, and that is one of the positives from COVID is that it has caused the church to be impacting the community and, and really not to, it, it, barely in time barely in time. Mm -hmm. You know, Anne-Marie, you host the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, which again, people can find on the Awaken Podcast Network and on any podcast network around the world. What are you talking about? All sorts of things to do with uh, business, practical, uh, you know, practical strategies, but very much around faith, uh, challenges that uh, business owners have uh, had to go through, navigating, you know, some difficult decisions. And, and I think just giving it each other permission to be able to share what we're passionate about. I mean, we, we love business. Well, when I say love business, you know, it, it's certainly not, but we enjoy business. It's something that inspires us and we love the Lord 
and we get to speak about both of those things, business and the Lord. So it's not separate. It's interesting. I read a um, a, a feedback on the podcast, you know, play and someone came stumbled across the podcast, obviously, and, and who wasn't a Christian said, I listened to this podcast, but I I couldn't. I I, I they were talking about Jesus and business in the same sentence. Is that a thing? That is a thing, and that's what we're doing out of the Christian Entrepreneurs yeah, but, Podcast. But you know what, Emery? How many Christians would struggle with that exact same sentence? I mean, how many Christians actually think of Jesus as a small business owner? I mean, how mm. many how many actually see him that he actually ran the family business after his father died before he became an itinerant preacher? Most of us and most preachers don't talk about the fact that God could have put Jesus in any family on the planet, but he put him in the family of a small business owner. Mm. I mean, the, and the whole thing about, you know, money, uh, I think that the church has um, taken, yeah, there's the, the certain aspects and completely unfortunately uh, Speaking about it in in a very um, yeah a way that I think the Lord would not want business is is just you know the marketplace is one way that we can impact others. You know there are some businesses that are contributing and supporting. There are other businesses that are influencing. You know real influential um, in the marketplace and decisions and so forth. There are so many different areas within business that we can influence. We can impact. We can you know um, support various other missions and so forth. I think it's uh, certainly something that, yeah, that the conversation needs to be had. We're having it. You, you, you guys are having it every day. We just need to to let others know that. Hang on, this is this is actually a thing. Yes, this is a thing. That could be a that could be a new slogan. That's You're a marketing that's a person. Great title. Yes, this is a thing. You should invite that person <laughs> onto a podcast to have the conversation about this is a thing. You know, Anne Maria, I want to talk about you as a Christian working woman. Um, talk to me and share with me what are some of the areas where you've had some of the biggest struggles that you have had to face as a Christian working woman? Yeah, great question. You know, in my business, I mean, I've always, people have always known that I am a Christian. I mean, they they may not openly share it, but there's certain aspects of my life that I will share. For instance, in Women in Leadership podcast, I interviewed someone who who was a wonderful um, ambassador for Christ. And so we had that conversation. But at the beginning of that episode, I went in and and created an intro that basically said, look, this is a topic that I haven't really covered on the show before, but it's one that's near and dear to me. If it weren't for my faith and my love of, of Christ, I would not have gotten through the death of my child. And so there were certain circumstances and struggles that I'm able to really show that it, if it, it was only through faith and, and love of the Lord that got me through that. And through just giving myself permission to share openly has led to conversations and business partnerships. I mean, it's it's incredible. And so for me, uh, thinking about, you know, me, myself as a Christian woman, the struggles that I have overcome, the challenges, I'm quite transparent in that. And I'm hoping that through being... Um, you know, transparent and sharing the lessons that I've learned, even the the multiple lessons that I've, you know, round and round. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that our God is a patient God because there's certain things, lessons that he's had me go over and over again. Mm-hmm. Now, you have you learned the lesson this time? No, we're going to go around again, are we? Okay. That when I share it in that way, I'm hoping that others um, will come to see that, look, we're all struggling with that. Because often what I see happen, especially for women, we have the secondary negative emotions where we start to feel guilty, we start to feel shame. Don't be doing that. Mm. We all struggle with certain things. You know, we we lean into the Lord and, um, you know, he forgives us so we don't need to have that secondary. And that's how I kind of want to live my life, that perhaps through sharing some of those stories and learnings, it will uh, help people break down the barriers and realize, you know what, I'm not alone. Others are struggling with that too. And there is a way forward. Amen. Good word. So is there, you know, just real quick, is there anything that you can share that you are using as a resource or a ministry that speaks to you or a website or an app, whatever it might be that really helps you living out your faith as a Christian working woman or whether it's for men and women? Yeah, you version. You know, the Bible app, mm-hmm. love that because there's certain um, categories that you can find. The other day, I, I mean, I typically don't watch TV because 
well, you know, fear and, and propaganda and all of that. And so there was a time where it, there was a moment where I started to feel a little bit fearful. Of, I need to get some study around courageous, um, you know, around courage and around. And so went into the U app, U version app, found some great studies, immersed myself obviously in prayer as well. And I found that incredibly helpful. So U version app is uh, one. Jesus Calling is another app that I have used in the past too, which was incredibly helpful. It, it was kind of went through a lens of looking at Bible verses, but as if Jesus was speaking to you. Right. And it allowed me to really um, see Jesus as not just, you know, he is the Messiah and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but a friend, a friend who loves you, has got compassion for you. And uh, yeah, I found that that uh, just Jesus calling was uh, very helpful too. Amen. We're talking with Anne-Marie Cross today. She's from Australia and she has a ministry, a business tree called podcastingwithpurpose.com and also the uh, Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast that you can hear right here on the Awaken Podcast Network, awakenpodcastnetwork.com, where you'll find 138 podcasts all focused on connecting your faith and your work. We'll be right back with more on I Work For Him. Want to build a profitable side hustle that impacts people with truth and healing in themselves and their leadership? Then look at becoming a certified leadership coach with Giant. Giant has been in the leadership space for over 13 years and has over 500 coaches in over 127 countries. Their coaches are being hired by Fortune 500 companies and organizations like I Work For Him. Jim and I took the Giant Sherpa training under one of these great coaches to become leaders worth following. Giant gives you everything you need to start your own coaching business from scratch, like hands-on training from top-level coaches, access to an all-in-one online platform to run your entire coaching business, and you get to join a thriving community of coaches around the world. To get started, Giant is hosting a coaching business workshop to help you learn how to build a successful coaching business. This workshop is 100% free, and you can reserve your spot by going to giant.tv forward slash I work for him. If you're ready to impact people and get paid to do it, go to giant.tv forward slash I work for him. That's giant.tv forward slash I work for him. Hey, welcome back to I Work For Him as Martha and I talk with Anne-Marie Cross today. She's got a podcast that I want you to listen to, the Christian Entrepreneur Podcast. She's got a, multiples that she does. Her business is all about podcasting, podcastingwithpurpose.com. So Anne-Marie, what kind of encouragement do you have today? For the Christian working women listening to this show, you, you, you talked about some tools you're using. You talked about things that are encouraging you. But a, a lot of times, Christian working women are very hard on themselves. As you said, they have those negative voices. What's one thing that somebody said to you that you want to pass on to the audience here in the United States? A mm. couple of things which tie beautifully together. The courage to be able to speak out, particularly uh, you know, imposter syndrome. I know that many people around the world, especially women, tend to struggle with that. I don't know everything about everything. Well, we don't know everything about everything. And, you know, positioning themselves as a trusted authority, that can often be something that they struggle with as well. And, and one of the things that I remind them of, and I'd love to share this message, we're not saying that we're better than anyone else. In fact, that's not it at all. We're just better placed to be able to support someone because we've been through the struggles that they've been through. We've come up with some you know, some systems, some solutions to be able to support them. So it's not that you're better than anyone else. We're not, but we're better placed through, you know, where the Lord's positioned us and, and through the experiences that we've had. So that I would encourage them uh, and then encourage them to not to be stuck in imposter syndrome. The enemy does not want you out there sharing your voice. So he will cause doubt, he will cause disappointment, distraction, all of those different things. But the Lord, if you feel it, if there's a you know an inkling in your heart that you want to share, there's a reason why. Share it. Ignore mm. the doubt. Just do it anyway. You know, courage. Or, or people are often looking for the the um, you know the the confidence to get out there and do something. But confidence will come through the courage of taking one step, then another step, and then another step. And uh, that's what I encourage them to do. Just take that next step, that one step to be able to share that message so that you can impact the world with the message that the Lord has put in your heart to share. Oh, those are such good words. And, you know, I think with all of the social media and all of the different, um, just the digital aspects of our life right now, I think that there are a lot of people that need to hear it's okay to be transparent, to be real, but then have the, have the courage that God gave you for what you do 
and do well. Um, I've seen a lot of people going on Facebook or whatever platform they're on and, and having authentic talks. And, you know, that's when we really want to lean in because we're seeing somebody actually just being real. And that's what um, I think endears, especially women to women, but I think everybody really, um, that is, it's warming, appealing to us. Yeah, you, sure you have a free offer you want to give away today. How to be distinguishable, uncopyable, and irresistible. It's a master class, a master class. Even if you're yes. in a crowded marketplace, how do people get a hold of that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is put together and um, covers some key points. So industrythoughtleaderacademy.com forward slash distinguishable message. I think you've got the link there that you'll Mm -hmm. also be sharing on the show notes. But it's all of the things that I've learned step by step, the things that you want to have in place so that when you consistently share this message, it's going to stand out to your ideal client and begin that conversation. All right. You're an influencer. You're an entrepreneur. Who do you listen to and follow? Yeah, absolutely. There's one person who actually was a, is a mentor, um, and um, Sandry, K- Sandy Kukowski, and she's very vocal, loves the Lord, you know, and she, it was one of her words that I heard uh, her share across Instagram as a platform that she's very, um, you know, very vocal on and uses. She said, you know, sometimes we're not sure about where we want to head, but to t- take that first step. Where are you now? What are you able to access? And just go out and do that. And it was because of that encouragement that I started the Christian Entrepreneurs uh, podcast. So, uh, but I have multiple, you know, I love the the version app, um, a lo- li- listen to a lot of different uh, pastors and, and sermons on YouTube. There's just so many more that we can access to. And, you know, everyone brings an insight that can really impact uh, your life. So I encourage you to tap into the wonderful resources on your n- podcast network as well. We can never learn enough and surround ourselves with other like-minded people who love the Lord so that we can go forth and uh, do what Jesus, you know, commanded us to do is go and be disciples, go and be show compassion and through your work impact the lives of people mm-hmm. so that they can come to you and go, why does everyone else act like this? But you're calm and, and then that gives you a wonderful opportunity to share, um, you know, Christ with them. That's for sure. That is so good. I, um, you know, it's just great to get a little peek into what other people are learning from because that's how we help each other to say, you know, here's something that has encouraged me to just go out and, and do it. That's right. Anne Marie Cross, thank you so much for being on the show tonight, today, t- tonight and today. And for <laughs> today just sharing and your story and for just giving us all some encouragement. We really appreciate what you share so often on the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for the opportunity. Make sure you check her out online, podcastingwithpurpose.com or on the Awaken Podcast Network at the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. You may listen to I Work For Him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We're Christ followers. Our workplace, it's our mission field. But ultimately, I I work for for him. Did you know that God has a calling on your life? It's true. He's called you to bring Jesus to the world. For some, that may look like a pulpit or a foreign mission field, but for most of us, it looks like a construction site, a cubicle, a hospital, or a classroom. Wherever it is that you work, live, volunteer, and invest, that is your mission field. To learn more about integrating your faith into your work and retirement, check out our books, I Work For Him, She Works For Him, and I Retire For Him by going to iworkforhim.com slash bookstore. Thank you for listening to the I Work For Him podcast with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Please visit iWorkForHim.com to learn more about connecting your faith and work, to join the I Work For Him nation, or subscribe to our weekly blog. You can also follow us on social media at I Work For Him to stay up to date and meet our guests. If today's message spoke to you, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast platform. Your review will launch more workplace missionaries across America. That's at I Work For Him and online iWorkForHim.com. I Work, the number Number four, him.com.